This is going to be a study on the subject of eternal security or once saved, always saved. When I first got saved, I was very confused about salvation. I knew I was saved and I knew to be saved, you came to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and His precious blood. But I didn't know much about the Bible and I doubted my salvation many times. And one of the reasons people doubt their salvation is because they don't know the doctrines of salvation and they don't know the doctrine of eternal security. Also, since most people believe that a person can lose salvation, a new convert will many times end up doubting their salvation because their family members will tell them that they can lose their eternal salvation. First off, you need to know what comes along with believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Once you get in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you have eternal life. Eternal life is found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is God manifest in the flesh, and God is eternal. The Bible says we have everlasting life once we are saved, and we pass from death unto life. Look at 1 John 5:11 through 13 It says, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So you can know that you have eternal life. And then John three fifteen through 16, That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 5, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John ten twenty seven through 28 My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So when you're, sa <clears throat> when you're saved, you're in God's hand. And not only that, you are a part of Jesus Christ's hand. You make up His hand because you are part of the body of Jesus Christ. If you could lose your salvation, then God would have, you have to amputate part of His body. And very clear verses right here that I've showed you, they show that you have everlasting life, you have eternal life once you get into Jesus Christ. And He is the one who gives eternal life. If you can lose your salvation, then you would lose everlasting life. If I have everlasting life today and I lost it tomorrow, then how was it everlasting? So I know I have eternal security because I have everlasting life. Everlasting life doesn't end. The second reason I know I can't lose my salvation is because I am sealed by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Notice it said, After that ye believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. It didn't say after you spoke in tongues. And it didn't say after you were baptized. And it didn't say after you joined a church building. It said, in whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So after you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, as the guilty sinner you are, and believe on Him as your crucified, buried and risen Savior, and His shed blood, then you are saved and sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. If I'm sealed the moment I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I sin tomorrow, will that make me lose my salvation? Does that break my seal? It said sealed unto the day of redemption. So wouldn't you be making God a liar if you say I can lose my salvation? He said I was sealed until the day of redemption, but you say I'm sealed until I commit adultery or shack up or take drugs or drink alcohol or whatever else. If I'm sealed until the day of redemption, then I'm going to stay sealed even up to the rapture where I get a glorified body that can't sin. Romans 8 
And verse 23 says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. So not only did I get everlasting life when I believed on Jesus Christ, but I got sealed by the Holy Spirit. Can you take my everlasting life? Can I take my everlasting life away? Can I break my seal? Am I that powerful? Is my sins in the flesh that powerful to do, to do that? And the third reason I believe in once in grace, always in grace, is because the love of God that I received when I got in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 38 through 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you notice the last part of the verse that says, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord? When we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then we are put into Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 3 says, Know ye not that so many as so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? 1 Corinthians 12, 23, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, or whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. Galatians three twenty seven, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, once you get in Christ, nothing can separate you from the love of God. I mentioned this verse to a person who was trying to convince me that I could lose my salvation. And they said, well, yeah, God will love everybody, even if they get backslid and lose their salvation. But the verse says the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. If you're not saved, then you're not in Christ. So once I got in Christ, nothing could separate me from the love of God that is in Christ. These verses are referring to the love of God that are only found that is only found in Christ, and nothing can separate me from that love. Verse thirty eight says, Death can't separate me. So if someone commits suicide and they're saved, will they lose their salvation? No. It says life can't separate you. So the struggles you face in this life, anything in, that involves this life can't take away your salvation. Angels can't take it even though they are greater in power and might than you. Principalities and powers can't take it, so Satan and his henchmen can't take it from you. And notice in verse 39, nor any other creature, and that would include anybody, your family members, or anyone else who try to talk you out of your salvation every day. They can't take it from you, even though they say, you people who believe once in grace, always in grace, just think you can go out and live like the devil and everything will be all right. And they are lying when they say things like that because we don't believe we can go out and live like the devil. Did you know they accuse Paul of saying the same thing? Romans 3 8 says, And not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, Let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. They said he was saying, let us do evil, that good may come. Just like people today say, that we say, well, I'm saved by grace through faith without work, so I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And I've never said that before, and I don't know any sane person who believes that they can just go out and be an awful, wicked sinner because they have eternal security. And Romans 6, 1 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Should we just keep on sinning even though we have eternal security? No, we should try our best not to sin. We should try our best not to sin. We, we may not be able to lose salvation, but we can lose our health, our food, our clothes, our family, our home, our happiness, our assurance, our testimony, and everything else in this life, and even rewards in the world to come. A lot of people say you can't teach eternal security because people will just live like they want to live. But you shouldn't quit teaching a Bible truth just because people 
don't do what they are supposed to do with that truth. If they live like a devil, then that is their problem, and they will answer for it. You will answer for what you taught them. So I believe in eternal security because I got everlasting life through Jesus Christ. I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit, and nothing can separate me from the love of God, which I got in Christ the moment I believed. The fourth reason I don't believe I can lose my eternal salvation is because I got adopted. When I got saved, I was adopted and made a son of God. John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Romans 8.15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Romans 8. 23, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Galatians 4, 5, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Ephesians 1, 5, having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So I am a son of God, and God is my father, just like nothing can change the fact that your earthly father is your earthly father. Nothing can change the fact that your heavenly father is your heavenly father. If you quit reading your Bible, praying, working for him, then you will lose fellowship with your father, but the relationship stays the same. He stays your father. If I lose fellowship and don't read my Bible, pray, and work for God, then I'll get to the judgment seat of Christ without any rewards. But I'm not going to hell because I've been adopted. I'll always be a son. So when I was saved, I got everlasting life. I was sealed by the Holy Spirit. Nothing separates me from the love of God. And I was adopted and made a son of God. Son of God. Do you still think you can lose your salvation? Well, let's look at the next reason I don't believe in eternal insecurity is because the faith that saves me isn't even my own faith. I got it given to me. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. I've heard some say, well, believing would be a work. That's stupid because God is the one who gave me the faith. It said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. In the Old Testament, it says, The just shall live by his faith. But in the New Testament, it is different. Paul says, The just shall live by faith. Our faith isn't our own. God gives it to us. Philippians 3, 9 says, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Since the faith I have was a gift given to me, even if I quit believing, I still can't lose my salvation. This guy asked me one time, he said, So if you're saved no matter what you do, what if you stop believing? And I quoted Second Timothy 2 and verse 13, which says, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Have you ever noticed that when you get in debates with these people that have this eternal insecurity, that they will keep popping off questions, and you can answer every one of theirs, but they don't want to answer any of yours. They have no answers to the questions you ask, and when you answer all their questions, they just keep coming back with more. But I can't lose faith because God gave me the faith. It is a gift and it can't be lost or taken back. So even if I quit believing, he can't deny himself, and he won't take back the gift. The next reason I believe in eternal salvation is because I'm not saved by works. Galatians 2.16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. If someone is saved by works, then that means they are having to physically do something to earn their salvation. Many people believe they are saved by living right, and then many people believe that they are saved by believing on Jesus Christ, 
and then living right after salvation. And that would be faith plus works. When someone says you can lose salvation, they are knowingly or unknowingly teaching you a faith plus works setup. I was talking to a person that has eternal insecurity. And he said he got saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, okay, great. So you don't believe you are saved by works. He said, no, I believe I'm saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ only. I said, okay, great. So you don't believe you can lose your salvation. He said, well, yeah, you can. If you fall away, you'll lose it. So he was believing a faith plus works system and didn't even realize it. He was saying he was saved by faith, but yet he was believing that his, he had to have consistent works after he was saved. It's like this, though. If you can't do good works to obtain salvation, you can't do good works to keep salvation. Either way, you are teaching a faith and works system. So I don't believe I can lose the gift of salvation because it is just that, a free gift that I got without earning it. And I didn't earn it by doing good things, and I don't keep it by doing good things. Another reason I don't believe I can lose my salvation is because of the operation God performed on me the moment I believed on Jesus Christ. Did you know God has a sharp sword, which is the Word of God? Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God can cut better than any surgeon, and he can see your soul that no one else can see. He can see your spirit inside you that no one else can see. When you got saved, he cut your soul and spirit loose from your flesh. Colossians 2.11 says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. And now every time your flesh sins, those sins are no longer applied to your soul like they were before you got saved. If the sins aren't applied to my soul, then how can I lose my salvation? And another reason I believe in eternal security is because of the new birth. I hear the word, I heard the word of God preached. I heard the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus Christ died for me and shed his blood. I believe the word. And God cut my soul loose from my flesh with a sharp two-edged sword. 1 Peter 1.23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. I was cut by the sword, the word of God, which is eternal itself. I was born again the moment I believed. John 3.3 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 7, Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. If I got born again, then how can I get unborn again? Even Nicodemus said, Can I go back into my mother's womb? The same way you can't get unborn when it comes to your fleshly birth. You can't go back in time and not get born. It is the same way for the spiritual birth. You can't get unborn spiritually either. Once you're born, that's it. There ain't no going back. And you can't get unborn. And the next reason I believe I can't lose my salvation is because of the judgment seat of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.11-15 through 15 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So at the judgment seat of Christ, our works take the form of tangible objects, which are passed through fire. Works of little value are burned up, while good works will survive. Uh, notice verse 25 said, If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So the works may be burned up, but the man is still saved. If you can get to the judgment seat of Christ with bad works, then that shows you can commit bad works down here and not lose your salvation. 
Some will get the judgment seat of Christ. Some will get to the judgment seat of Christ without any good works and still be saved. Did you know that not doing good things is a sin? James 4.17 says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. So it is a sin to be a lazy slacker. If one sin would send you to hell even after you're saved, then you're going to hell for sleeping in every day and not witnessing. If not having any good works will send one to hell, even though they got saved, then why are people showing up at the judgment seat of Christ without any good works? And the only good works that they did have, they did for their self. But yet they are saved. The doctrine that you can lose your salvation really doesn't make much sense when lined up with the Bible. And there are so many reasons I believe that I can't lose my salvation. I have given you tons of biblical evidence that you are saved forever. But the last reason I know I'm saved forever is because the Lord shows us that we must rightly divide. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The main reason people believe they can lose salvation is because they don't rightly divide the Bible. Most denominations you know of today, like the Church of God, Catholic, Pentecostal, Methodist, and whatever else will teach that man can lose their salvation. Are all these people just crazy? Or does the Bible teach that someone can lose their salvation? The Baptists and Presbyterians believe a man can't lose his salvation, but they mess up because they try to make the entire Bible teach eternal security. Both sides are wrong because one is trying to make the whole Bible teach eternal insecurity, and the other is trying to make the whole thing teach eternal security. The ones who teach you can lose salvation will go to verses in Hebrews, James, Revelation, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and all those books that are not for the church age. And then they'll go to books in the Old Testament because that, that stuff is written to a different group of people. Now don't get me wrong, I believe the Bible is written for our learning. And we can get instruction and in righteousness out of all of it. And we can get practical things out of all of it. I'm not a hyper-dispensationalist. I'm what you would call a moderate dispensationalist. I don't believe that all of the Bible is to be applied to me doctrinally. It's all applied doctrinally to someone, but you can't apply the whole thing doctrinally to yourself. And Baptists who are right on eternal security for the time we are living in, they will take verses that teach eternal security and apply them to everyone who has ever lived. They will try to make the entire Bible teach eternal security where it doesn't even teach it. And if it doesn't teach it, they will change the verse or spiritualize it to make it say something that it doesn't say. For example, an old preacher that's gone and dead now, everyone loved him because he was a great soul winner. But he wanted to take out a verse in Revelation because he said it didn't fit Baptist doctrine. And your approach to the book shouldn't be this way. You should approach the book and let it correct your doctrine. And if a certain Baptist doctrine doesn't match what the Bible says, then you should drop that belief. You don't adjust the Bible to fit your beliefs. You adjust your beliefs to fit the Bible. And if you want the Bible, the whole Bible to teach eternal security, you're going to want to take out verses yourself because it doesn't all teach that. When a man puts verses like Hebrews 6, 4 through 6 and James 2, 14 on a born again believer in the church age, he is wrongly dividing the word of truth and that's why the people who believe they can lose their salvation, that's why they believe it, is because they're taking these verses that are for people in the time of Jacob's trouble and putting it on us. Just like when a Baptist applies Galatians 2.16 to everyone in the Old Testament and in the time of Jacob's trouble, he is wrongly dividing the word of truth, even if he is a great soul-winning, godly man of God. The book is always right, and it never has any contradictions. By wrongly dividing, that will always make the Bible contradict itself. Everything in the Bible is for me, but not all of it is to me. When reading the Bible, you must ask who is talking, to whom is he talking, and what is he talking about. But I hope I've given you assurance that you cannot lose your salvation. And I 
hope that you will continue to study this because I didn't even cover all the reasons why you can't. And maybe at a later time we'll get into all the verses that people use to say that you can lose your salvation and explain why those verses aren't teaching that a born-again believer in the church age can lose it.